Welcome back to the sharp end of the stick. Welcome back to part two of the Road to Wilts, where the Bazooka Boogie is in full tilt effect. This is a multiplayer head-to-head -head match between the Americans and Hedgehog as the German Army. As we get going here, it becomes apparent that the reconnaissance battle is over. Right here, we're seeing GIs on the South Hill under fire from the German assault. The South Hill is the big one in the middle of the map. Again, more bazooka goodness here. On my left flank along Route 1, we spot a German Heitzer, a little tank destroyer built atop a Czech tank. The Germans are making their main thrust, but they're doing so in the face of my artillery barrage and continued shelling from my Sherman tanks. This is 2nd Platoon, recent reinforcements moving up on my right flank, crossing the river and taking advantage of the low terrain to stay out of enemy sights. put that giant orange cross there is a frickin' genius. I'm not sure what the purpose is, but it seems to confer upon my troops some sort of superhuman shooting capabilities. Second platoon is now completely across the river, taking up positions. And here comes the German. I'm gonna kill all your Shermans, Megalon Jones response. And that right there is one dead Sherman. He got beat up at the end of the last movie. Uh, severely damaged. At this point, only the commander gets out and he's out of here. This right here is really funny. I mean, it's almost like something out of a Gilligan's Island episode. They miss each other by like five seconds. Well, we're going to take a very short break from this action and try to figure out what's going on at Wilts. Why are we fighting so hard for this town in Belgium? Well, in the middle of December, von Rundstedt launched his attack with the majority of which was uh, based on two mechanized German armies, one of which is 5th Panzer Army, which we're facing. And within a few days, the center of gravity had more or less settled around a handful of towns in the center of the Ardennes, of which Wilts is one. What's so important about Wilts is that it's only about a little over a dozen miles away from Bastogne and the deploying 18th Airborne Corps. We got a halt or at least slow down the German advance so that the 101st can dig in around Bastogne. Now, getting back to the operation at hand, I plan on sending 2nd Platoon in a deep attack against Hedgehog's left flank. The 
point is, is to tie up his troops and basically get him to stop his attack upon the South Hill. But before we can do that, we have to achieve some sort of firepower superiority. The Heitzer continues his hunt for my single, solitary, lone Sherman. And we get this bit of awesome sauce happening. Note the sloped armor on the Heitzer. That last explosion is a German Panzerfaust. My sole surviving tank is now damaged in the track. This here is the fighting on the center hill, the south hill. The Germans have more or less ran into a brick wall. I gotta take care of the heights, sir. Here comes my favorite piece of kit in the U.S. Armory, the M10 Tank Destroyer, and Blamo. That's a dead height, sir. On my right, we note a assault gun and a German Panther tank, both of which are starting to maneuver against my forces. Here we are at 3.38 in the afternoon, 2nd platoon and 1st platoon are engaged. I'm sending out bazooka teams to the center and redeploying the M10 tank destroyer to try to shoot that German armor. Along Route 1, something explodes at an anti-tank mine. I never get a view of what that is, but it's always good to hear something like that. And here comes the assault howitzer. Panther starts to shell my troops, most notably 1st platoon in the center, and that 75mm long barrel gun really is the ace in the sleeve for the German army. Everyone talks about the 88s, but I think it's the 75 that's the big kill. Here's my M10 redeploying, and the name of the game is going to be Shoot and Scoop.
These guys are old pros. They're a elite crew, and they do the customary double tap. Sight of my surviving Sherman atop the East Hill, or excuse me, I believe it's, yeah, it's the East Hill in the center, and he gets a rear end shot on the assault gun, that thing's dead, nobody's gonna get out of that. At this point, I've probably made a mistake. My attack is really aggressive, and I don't have any way to really support it with armor, owing to the damage to the Sherman and the M10 not really being suited for the task. Now, at the end of 44, the German army can put out at least as much firepower in terms of infantry. Uh, as the U.S. Army, because they've got all those MG-42s, the brand new assault rifles, the machine pistols, and we start to have uh, serious casualties taking place in 2nd Platoon, and it basically it goes right back to my over-aggressiveness, my misreading of the situation. And that's all the time we got for right now. The battle's heating up, and we could be nearing decision time. I hope you stay tight and hang out for the next installment, which should be any time coming up in the future. Ciao.